What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the detailed review of the BMW F850 GS Adventure. So this is the same bike which I rode in Kerala last month and I couldn't make an English video for this motorcycle that time because I was too tired. The trail riding was too much for me and uh, I've requested BMW and I got this motorcycle again for almost five days by now. Oh boy, I had a lot of fun on this motorcycle. Previously, I had a thought that this is a toned down version of a 1250GS because I haven't seen this motorcycle that much. After riding this motorcycle, I got to know that not much people are appreciating the significance of this motorcycle because this is, not, this is unlike the 1250. Because I have given this motorcycle to few people who are riding the 1250 and they are telling that this motorcycle is altogether a different breed. It's more practical, it's more fun to ride in off-roads. It has a lot of features by default. By the way, this is the GS Adventure version. There are two versions for this, the F850 GS and the F850 GS Adventure. The difference is, on the Adventure, you, you get a bigger tank, you get the auxiliary lights as standard, the crash protectors, the saddle stays, all these things comes as standard with an additional cost of 1 lakh rupees. So in my opinion, you get everything on this motorcycle. You don't have to modify this motorcycle after buying this motorcycle for your off-roads or highway riding or anything. And oh boy, this motorcycle looks gorgeous. It's really, really huge. And you know, I started liking trail riding after riding this motorcycle. Last week was super fun with this motorcycle because I'm generally a road guy. This is the first time I'm getting a true off-road experience on a very big motorcycle. Yes, of course, I've taken the desert sled, but the sled is altogether a different breed of motorcycle. So this one is a proper adventure motorcycle, the bigger adventure version. So let's see how it actually looks. So this one has that typical BMW headlight section, which looks really nice and purposeful as well because I like the illumination of the headlight. The throw is good and you get an adjustable windscreen here with two adjustments. This is a taller setting, this is a lower setting. When you go for off-roads, you can put it down and when you're on highway, bring it up. And you have a bigger wheel here, all spoke wheels with tubeless tires and the brakes. Such a brilliant thing, man. Just a matter of getting used to these brakes, then you'll love it. And yes, of course, this comes with auxiliary lights as standard. Uh, the suspension is really good. The feedback from the front is really good. It's a little onto a uh, softer side. It feels like it is traveling on a very bumpy highway. So you can feel that, especially if you're used to uh, tighter suspensions, you will feel that. And coming out of this side, the huge tank of the GSA. Looking down, we have the BMW engine over there, the 850. Uh, if you are onto super bikes, I mean onto little class probably this is not the most engaging one that you'll get on road but when you touch off roads it's altogether different this is what you want and uh, you'll get quick shifter as standard up shift and down shift and here you will see the electronically adjusted suspension basically there are different riding modes and based on the riding modes the suspension changes by itself you don't have to do anything just press the keys you will get it here you can actually see the seat height varying there so there are two suspension settings one is dynamic mode and one is road mode on the road mode actually the, the seat height feels a little lower but on the dynamic mode the suspension is on the taller settings uh, that means actually it learns the terrain and adjusts by itself so suspension setting is good but if you are someone like me who's a little short you have to deal with the seat height and coming out of the race section we have all the saddle stay and things over here and coming onto this side we have a neatly designed exhaust this sounds good as well and this one comes with chain drive unlike the elder brother the 1250 the 1250 actually comes with the shaft drive the engine is actually really really smooth that's what i liked because when i was riding this motorcycle on road it gives me a really good punch it's a two cylinder and these motorcycles which is around 90 to 100 bhp really give a nice feel in indian traffic as well so let's talk about the few things that we see in the dial by the way this is a motorcycle with keyless entry so i have the device in my pocket so i'm turning it on yeah there you'll see all the details so there are a few things on the handlebar i'll just walk you through the things uh, before i start using it so this is the typical joystick thing that you see with the bmw gs there's a menu button here we have the cruise control button and auxiliary light on off caution lamp this one disables the traction control and this one is for adjusting the suspension the indicator the horn and on the side we have the ignition and the kill switch combined here the mode button and the heated grips if i look over there i keep pressing i have road dynamic enduro and enduro pro these four riding modes actually i have disabled the rain mode so once you disable the rain mode you'll get the enduro pro version which is like the pure off-road version of this motorcycle as i mentioned you can disable the traction control over here and you press this lower button you'll see that the suspension setting it is in road and it's in dynamic so dynamic is like it will adjust by itself on the fly really nice to ride in that settings what we see over here is the riding mode here the lot of details which we'll see here now i have set the fuel range here this is the tachometer this is speedometer the gear push indicator the time uh, the ambient temperature so it packs in really everything 
that you need for your everyday use or for your touring by the way as i mentioned this motorcycle is a little tall for me but the seating comfort is extremely nice be the rider seat or the pillion seat the seating position is extremely nice you will get a feel that you are sitting on top of the motorcycle and riding you don't really feel like you're sitting inside the motorcycle you'll feel like you're on top of the motorcycle and controlling the motorcycle so that's a great way to ride so let's go for a spin all right we are back on road okay definitely a very tall motorcycle for my height you can see that i'm tiptoeing so now the bike is in dynamic mode the full power of the BMW F850 GS. The engine actually screams like anything. It gives you a really nice kick and the throttle response is really nice in this dynamic mode. So to talk about the engine, yes, this is actually tuned for more torque. Two cylinders are known for that and this one is an off-road centric bike so definitely you need a lot of torque. The bottom end is really nice and one extremely nice thing which I saw with this motorcycle is that say even if you are in a speed of 60 or 70, it's in 6 gear now, there are no knocking issues, the engine is not stressed, no vibration or nothing. You just open the throttle, the motorcycle actually picks very well. That's what, even in the 6 gear, if you can experience that the engine is so stable, the engine is so nice, the engine is actually very relaxed to pull you from that speed till 200 km. So what I've done is something like 180 or 190 on this motorcycle and that's kind of pretty comfortable. What I see is that if you're on highways and uh, you can comfortably cruise from a speed of 140 to 160 km per hour all day long and the beauty with the two cylinder is that it has the right torque so if you have to overtake a lot of vehicles on the highway sometimes you really don't have to change the gear. It's unlike the inline 3 or the inline 4. Ample amount of torque. So let's talk about the other things other than the engine. So the gearbox is actually crisp. The clutch feel is right and by the way this motorcycle comes with up and down quick shifter that means you don't have to use the clutch for your upshifts and downshift which is actually really nice for touring and when it comes to the brake uh, if you're used to 1000 cc motorcycles then i'll say that you might feel that the initial bite of the brake is not there but it has a very progressive brake you'll gradually get that bike and uh, the front suspension is actually towards the softer side it takes up all terrains when you are riding this motorcycle you might feel it like riding a small motorcycle it's like say an adventure 390 or something like that because the center of gravity of the motorcycle is like really low and you don't feel that and when you ride the motorcycle you actually get a feel that you're sitting over the motorcycle and controlling the motorcycle rather than sitting inside the motorcycle and controlling it so be it standing on the footbag or having a comfortable seat like this you have a lot of control on the motorcycle and with the stock tires and the braking setup i really find easy to control this motorcycle and the braking is also good there are no unnecessary abs intervention at any riding modes and the ergonomics is like uh, i have a completely upright riding posture legs are relaxed and even the same thing for the pillion as well and if you ask me if i have faced any heating issues on this motorcycle i'll tell that only when you ride this motorcycle inside city you'll face a little bit of heating issues otherwise not a big deal and uh, i'm actually surprised to see the level of heat that, that this motorcycle actually pushes out being an 850cc two-cylinder, I thought the heating will be really really bad but not like that. It was pretty much in control and it was not at all to a level where I have to stop the motorcycle and all. Uh, so it's really nice and if you are on highways, you won't ever feel the heating and, and be it on off-roads. Basically the underline is, if the vehicle is moving, you won't face any heating issue. And to talk about the ownership aspects of this motorcycle, this motorcycle actually comes for 17.1 lakh on road. The F850 GSA, uh, the F850 GS is one lakh lesser than this. But in my opinion, I'll say that with this additional one lakh, what you get is a bigger tank, the auxiliary lights, uh, the crash bars, saddle stays, and things. I'll say that uh, if you have to buy all these things separately, then that will be more than a lakh. This is a off-road going motorcycle. Obviously, you have to go for crash guards if you are going for off-roads. And if you are planning for highway tours, then having a bigger tank is also really nice. So in my opinion, I'll say that if you can uh, adjust the fact that it's a little more bigger bike, then the F850 GS is a really nice choice over the GS. But yeah, some people like slimmer motorcycles, so those people can look at the F850 GS. Uh, and if you ask me, what's my take on the pricing? I'll say that this motorcycle is like aggressively priced. 
because I compare this motorcycle with the Tiger 900 or the Honda Africa Twin or someone who's actually wanted to step into the Ducati Multistrada Enduro and uh, want to practice off-road and get some more experience then this motorcycle is like really really nice choice for you and this motorcycle goes for service once in 10,000 kilometers and uh, there is no free service concept in BMW it's all paid service and uh, each paid service will cost you from 12,000 to 15,000 rupees uh, excluding the part change so this is for the general service and I have to say that this is one of the first proper adventure motorcycle which I'm really impressed with because this is much lighter this is easy to handle except the fact that I'm way too short for this kind of a suspicion setup I'm really happy to ride this motorcycle because when it comes to the city I was much comfortable in the first couple of days I was using the suspension setup in the dynamic mode where the seat height is very tall I was thinking to have a ladder as an accessory because I'm too short for this bike but when I started hitting the dirt or when I started hitting the highway everything changed this motorcycle becomes so comfortable to me because I like to tour and uh, 140 or 160 is like a piece of cake on this motorcycle it really glides through the highway and when it comes to off-roads this is much easy to ride only one problem which I face with uh, while riding off-road is that in the enduro pro mode there's a slight missing for the throttle I never faced it in the road mode or in the dynamic mode so you have to keep the rpm just above 4000 rpm otherwise just a brilliant piece of machine never in my life i thought that i'll be impressed with an adventure motorcycle so that's all with this video of the bmw f850 gs adventure i hope this video is helpful for you and as always show some love in the form of likes and comments see you in the next video until then bye bye